Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about build X and creating images for multiple architectures. So let's switch over to my screen here and here we have an, a common uh, normal interface here and I'm gonna go into a project that I have. Uh, no, not GitHub, GitLab. So there we have a project and this is pretty much one of the tools that I uh, help maintain where it's pretty much a tool where we can do a lot of conversions of PDFs and so on. But the important part here is that I need to test this tool. Uh, this tool is something that we run thousands of PDFs every day in order to extract information and uh, improve them in different ways. And the hard part of testing them is if I run a test flow with a thousand PC PDFs, that will take roughly two days to run if I only use one CPU. And that is not really that great. So I need to run multiple processes. So what I have created is something where I can put a bunch of PDF jobs into a RabbitMQQ and then I can have a lot of different workers in order to handle this uh, uh, different workloads. And in my home lab here, I have a couple of Raspberry Pis and a couple of normal machines and I want to deploy all uh, over all of them. And in order to do that, I of course need to handle the ARM architecture and the AMD architecture. So both of them is required to be built. And this is what I'm uh, currently doing to do that. So first off, we need to create an X builder. So we will do Docker create, build X create, and then we will add the use flag here. We will give it a name, my builder. We have the driver options, network host, and build a kit D flags. We will say allow insecure entitlement network host. And the last part here for the driver and so on, the reason we put those in is because we want to be able to use HTTP, not HTTPS, because I haven't really created any um, internal SSL certificates and so on. And I don't want to have all the extra security in my lab environment. If you have everything set up correctly, this should not be required. Uh, and after we run that command, we can actually do a build. So a build looks something like this. We have docker, build x, build, and then we will add the push flag. So this will actually push it to my repository. We will have the platform of Linux, AMD64, comma, Linux, ARM64, and there is like 20 or so different architectures that you can build to, so there is a lot of them. And, and then you will tag it, and in this case I will tag it with the place I want to put it, so my node7ei.org. These are the Nexus repository where I want to put it, the port where I will put it to, and then the uh, tooling and the current snapshot that I want to test. And I want to uh, build dots of this current directory. And now it will start a process here. And if we uh, stop it, we can actually see that it is running both AMD and ARM64 at the same time, different workloads and building this. And we also see here down that it actually started to export it, but I don't want it to send up a new version um, because I've already built this. And when it's done, we can go into Sonarcube here. We can see that we have this WebArch PDF here. I actually tried to create one AMD and one ARM64 version um, separately because I was running through and had so many issues to actually get it deployed. But what I figured out after a long while was that I actually deployed two separate images, but they had the same information in them. And that was my problem. So if we go into the Docker file here, we can see that we have a bunch of build steps up here. Nothing important actually what's included, but this down here, that's the important part. So here I actually needed to run uname 
R64 to get the particular architecture. Before I had something called target architecture here that I thought would get this actually inf this information, but that didn't work. So by adding this if statement and getting uh, if it's an Arch64, then go to an Arch64 architecture, otherwise use an X64 uh, architecture. And then I can use architecture to download the right Java version down here and also unpack the right Java version. And then I will be able to run it as uh, in the same way. That means I will have two separate images with the right Java version and built in the right way. So even if I run this and I don't run Java, then I don't actually need that part because you will get the right Debian version, you download the right packages. If you build any libraries locally, then those will be built for either ARM or um, AMD. So in this case, it was just, I needed to download a pre-built package and then I needed to give it the right information there. So when I got it in here, we can see that we have a bunch of snapshots here and I wanted to use it. I wanted to push it to a Kubernetes cluster. And here was the hard part. This was something that I struggled with. First off, I wasn't able to deploy it. So I got, um, actually got the right version, as I was saying that I got the arm for the arm. Uh, the Raspberry Pis and got the AMD for the rest. That was a huge puzzle. But when I got that working, I also wanted to get the uh, servers who should be able to run one of these instances. I wanted one per server. So I wanted each Raspberry Pi to run one because this will take up all the memory of the Raspberry Pis. We have some servers that has very a uh, little memory as well, so they can only host one. Uh, in particular, this hosts node two, where the actual control interface is installed, only was able to run one, and when it deployed three to this or two, it actually uh, hang, and I couldn't actually see what was going on, so I needed to run um, commands on different hosts and so on. So I needed to figure that one out as well. And I don't really have a super great solution for this. Uh, first off, if we look at one of the deployment script here, this is when I was trying to deploy different versions to different, um, uh, different hosts. So in this case, I wanted to uh, deploy five replicas and yeah, we can uh, open it in an editor instead. Um, so I wanted to deploy it to five replicas. I wanted to have the revision history, uh, progress deadline if it, uh, it it can't run more than kill it after a an hour, um, and selector and so on. And this is the important part here. There is the affinity. So I had a node affinity that I said I want you to only run on ARM64 hosts, and then we had the preferred scheduling during execution with a wait. So this thing here was um, something that should say you should only deploy or try to deploy one per host because you had the host name down here and so on. So this was something that I looked up and it said that that, that should solve the problem and only deploy one per host. Did not work for me at all. Um, so what I actually switched over to using is this script here where I first off have the same here. I say that I want four replicas instead. And then down here I say I want these particular host names. These are required in order to deploy something. So deploy only to these host names. And in that case you think, oh yes, you will get one per host, right? Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. Um, so let's try to deploy this again here, cube. CTL, uh, maybe it will just work this time because uh, of course the demo ghost, um, but I have never been able to get this to work satisfactory. It only deploys to Kubernetes in a strange way. So this, one, this time it actually worked. I got one per host, yay, everything worked. But I have seen that it has put 
uh, Marigold and Arundir, these are my Raspberry Pis. And I have gotten two on each of these uh, and none on Node 7 and Node 8. Uh, sometimes I get only Marigold and then Node 7 get two of them. So it's very random uh, where it actually puts uh, these. Which is a little bit disappointing. I want it to work every time of course and when it doesn't it's not really that useful for me um, i have felt that kubernetes is probably very good for particular workloads and when you can just say i want a couple of these and then just put them into a cluster but where you not really care about where it actually puts things then it's probably super great uh, but in my case i'm thinking about deploying this using Ansible instead so I can actually guarantee that I get one per host. Yeah, now it worked again, of course. Just because I wanted to show it, it doesn't, sh doesn't show the actual issue. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the current state I am in uh, at the moment. If you have any suggestions or so on to get... Um, good result where you always get one per node and so on and if you are really great at kubernetes i would love for you to write something in the comment section about that uh, otherwise i will just create an ansible script where i can actually deploy one per host and remove kubernetes because it doesn't really add anything to my workflow at the moment uh, so yeah the, it's not really something that I need for this particular test case. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any other comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next one.